So another day and another report of IgG4 antibodies observed in mRNA vaccinated. We've done numerous videos on this topic already on this very unusual side effects post mRNA vaccinations only, which is this formation of these IgG4 antibodies, which tend to build tolerance towards what these antibodies are supposed to target. So let's talk about this. This is definitely a topic of great interest for me. My name is Dr. Mikhail Arashik of Neurogenomics. Let's get going. This is now, I believe, seventh publication that I'm reporting on, and I found out there is even more. So there will be more science on this topic. Seventh publication of this unusual side effect being observed in mRNA vaccinated. And I'll talk about as to why IgG4 antibodies are important. But basically, what does the study confirm? Because these studies all seem to collaborate with the results. So this one confirmed once again that these antibodies, unusual antibodies, are only observed post-mRNA vaccination. It also confirmed once again that basically if you had a third mRNA injection, so post booster shot in this particular study, everyone was, everyone was presenting with these antibodies. It also confirmed, and this is a bit unfortunate, but it also confirmed that this can start showing up after the second shot already. And most importantly, I think it is the second study that I now know of that also showed that and they that investigated memory B cells. So we're gonna expand on that. What are memory B cells basically? Those are the type of B cells. B cells, first of all, are the cells that are responsible for producing antibodies. And memory B cells are the type of B cells who have been committed to produce a specific antibody. And those are the ones that are going to be recalled in order to produce the antibodies against antigen that has previously been observed by the body okay so they've studied that and we're going to go over those results but there is some good news as well in in this particular study that i want to share with you as well now why should we be looking at igg force as well and why should we be paying close attention to this is because igg force are not necessarily benign they have been observed in cancers and they've been documented in many different types of cancers by now, as well as autoimmune diseases. I am currently producing an article with a group of scientists precisely on the topic of how IgG4 could, in theory, be contributing to cancers. There's at least four different methods that we think could be happening, and this is your sneak peek for that information. And these, all of that should be investigated in great detail for sure. So this is not something you should just be dismissing. It's definitely the type of information that requires very careful monitoring and analysis. All right, so what, what happened here? So they, the authors wanted to basically look at, answer this question, hey, we we're seeing these IgG4 antibodies being reported by others. So what is the cause of this? Is it, is it the presentation of the antigen or basically an entity that the immune system is recognizing and responding to? That's what antigen means. Or is it, or is it because of the type of vaccination, vaccine formulation? And their way they wanted to address that particular topic was by measuring what antibodies were being observed in these individuals, number one, and what kind of memory B cells were being observed in these individuals. And the type of patients, these were healthy individuals that they were looking at, were people who had the primary Pfizer vaccination followed by a booster shot, so in total three shots as well as people who took AstraZeneca, two shots, followed by mRNA booster shot, okay? So what did they find? The primary findings are very typical to what is usually being reported when it comes to 
when it comes to vaccines, which is, hey, great news, great news, great news. Why? Because they mentioned, first of all, after the second shot with the mRNA injections only, it was, it was clearly observed that there was a, at least eight to 10 fold antibodies against the spike protein and they only measure against the receptor binding domain of the spike protein or basically the part of the spike protein that is involved in interacting with the ACE2 receptor, which is basically how the virus would be getting entry into the to, into our cells using the spike protein. So that's all they were looking at throughout the, throughout the studies. And in essence, you see much higher levels of antibodies post-mRNA injections than the adenovirus-based vector vaccines. But these were including neutralizing antibodies. So neutralizing antibodies are the type that will prevent, would prevent, have the ability to prevent the virus from infecting our cells. But after the booster, the third shot, what they were noticing is that is that the levels were similar between whether you had of levels of antibodies were similar whether you had mRNA injections as the primary vaccination method or the AstraZeneca ones. Okay, so the third shot, the M, the third third shot, of which was mRNA vaccination for all of these individuals, the booster was always mRNA vaccine made all of these equivalent. The same thing is for memory B cells. And then again, they looked at memory B cells that were targeting specifically the spike protein. Again, receptor binding domain of the spike, spike protein. And they were pretty similar between all of the individuals after the mRNA booster shot. Okay. So one more thing that they also looked at is that, and they measured it, by the way, I should have mentioned this, they measured, measured these levels one month after the second shot and six months after the second shot, as well as one month after the third shot and six months after the third shot. So that allowed the authors to look at temporal effects. So what happens over time? All right. And one more thing that they also looked at is they looked at how these antibodies that these individuals were producing were capable of neutralizing mm, different variants and after two shots the antibodies were very good at targeting delta which was clearly observed before but not very good at targeting omicron and the two variants of omicron that they were looking at was ba2 and ba5 variant these are already gone but you know this, this these were basically the variants available perhaps at the time of the study but after the third shot and six months after the third shot, all variants were well targeted by the antibodies, including the Omicron. And basically the take home message is hooray, vaccines work great. Look, their mRNA vaccination allows further maturation of the bodies to be able to eventually target Omicron variants as well. So in theory, it all looks exactly what we want to be seeing with the vaccines, but this is why looking at the subtypes of antibodies is important because now we have this story with these IgG4s. So of course they also look at the different subtypes. And what did we what did we observe here? So first of all, IgG4 antibodies started to appear six months after the second mRNA shot, not after the AstraZeneca. So this confirms what was seen before. And also IgG4 memory B cells started to appear after six months after the, the second shot. Again, this was observed once before, so it confirms previous, previous stu one study as well that I already covered for you in the past as well. So there's that, and these IgG4 levels, as well as levels of the memory B cells, increased after the third shot. And another thing that happened is some of the individuals had a breakthrough infection, meaning they also got infected between one and a six-month time period after the third 
third injection that they had, okay? And if you had breakthrough infection, your, your overall antibody levels and the memory B cells also increased, although they did not look at that specifically for effect of on IgG4, which is too bad. It would have been great if they did because some studies before also showed that breakthrough infection can further promote observation of these IgG4 antibodies in mRNA vaccinated individuals, okay? But here we go. We're clearly seeing this. Now, what's the good news? There's a good news and a bad news. <laughs> the great news is that because they looked at different time points is that those individuals who were injected three times with mRNA and never had an infection six months after their third shot, as compared to the one month after the third shot, the levels of IgG4 antibodies appear to be decreasing. So that's fantastic news because basically the concentration is reduced. The bad news is that those who had a breakthrough infection, those levels did increase, but they did not quantitate that. But you could see from, from their graphs that these levels were increasing. So again, confirming what was observed before. So that's unfortunate because of course, it's not that difficult to get infected these days with SARS-CoV-2 because it has become so infectious. So, but still very, very welcome news. Another very good news is that while the memory B cells for IgG4 antibodies were increasing over time when they looked at all memory B cells, irrespective of what those B cells should be targeting. So not just the spike protein, but basically anything, anything um, in, in the body of these individuals. Memory B cells dedicated to IgG4 antibodies were basically not observed. So the nice thing is that the total quantity of these memory B cells dedicated to the production of IgG4 antibodies is very, very small. So that's also, that's also really good news uh, with regards to this particular study, okay? Now, let's see, what else can I tell you from, uh, from this uh, particular work? I think that probably summarizes it, ev everything for you. It basically is just another another confirmation of what was what was seen before and as i mentioned i don't think we should be ignoring this and as i mentioned now that i'm keep digging for more and more literature i've been i'm now finding more articles so i have a lot more literature to go through um now one thing i should mention is that none of this none of these effects were observed when astrazeneca two shots were taken by individuals first all right so the only individual that took two astrazeneca shots and then took a booster mrna booster that started to produce igg4 antibodies there was one individual who also happened to have a breakthrough infection as well so basically the take-home message here is that this is mrna injection specific event once again confirms that and because of that, the authors conclude that this must be either due to the antigen being presented by mRNA or perhaps, mm, so the vaccine formulation, so the mRNA, the fact that it's the mRNA vaccines, or perhaps the spacing of vaccines. Now, I don't think it's the spacing of vaccines. So why? Because mRNA vaccines were taken typically by everyone three three weeks apart versus AstraZeneca was a longer time period. I can't remember from, from memory what how long the time period was, but it was longer than that and, uh, um, and like substantially longer. However, from all of the studies that I looked into IgG4s, some of the mRNA first two vaccines were spaced about up to six weeks apart and these effects are still observed. So that's, that's one thing. And the other one is that there is one study that showed that Moderna mRNA vaccination resulted in higher 
quantities of IgG4 than the Pfizer one. So this would again insinuate that this is likely due to antigen amount and not just the and not the time spacing in between vaccination levels. Okay, so and uh, and that would be it. So that's all I have for you for for this particular video. I clearly I'm very dedicated to this topic right now, so I will be creating more content on this. Literally everything on this topic I'm I'm presenting to you because once again right now it looks like every study that is looking at people who took mRNA vaccines and they had a, three of them basically it looks like IgG fours are always being observed right so what that does what does what does it mean clinically we still have yet to find out but I don't think we should be dismissing this at all in fact quite the opposite it should be very carefully studied and luckily it looks like it's starting to gain attention as I mentioned this particular study it wasn't that IgG force were being discovered by a surprise these authors are now for example wanted to understand more hey what is happening here exactly why is I, why are these igg 4 antibodies showing up and now it means basically scientists are specifically asking questions to know, learn more about this all right well thank you once again for supporting me please share this video this is how we grow please leave a comment let us know what you think this is now a long series as well and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and finally check out our patreon account oh and one more thing we have a COVID q a event coming up as well so please check it out these events we answer some questions that are handpicked from the youtube audience and now i also want to change the format a bit and basically we're going to be accumulating knowledge including knowledge brought by the participants with regards to how best to protect our immune systems because that's what i'm really interested in the most and what can we do in order to make sure that we're healthy all right bye everyone and i look forward to seeing you soon ciao